All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is James Kelly. I am a, an assistant director of admissions at Norwich University. I was a graduate of Norwich University in 2015 uh, with a criminal justice degree, and I was a member of the Corps of Cadets. Um, and then upon graduation, I uh, commissioned in the Vermont Army National Guard, and I'm currently a second lieutenant. Um, so I am very knowledgeable on ROTC and the Corps of Cadets here at Norwich, having gone through it and also uh, uh, having had Norwich been a significant part of my family's life as well with a number of my family members going through uh, the cadet program. So this right here, uh, courage, honesty, temperance, and wisdom, those are the cardinal virtues that we live by as members of our Corps of Cadets. Um, so I'm gonna just kind of go over some information regarding the similarities and the differences between ROTC and the Corps of Cadets. Um, it can get a little confusing, um, so I'm going to try and explain them the best that I can. All right, so first off, um, ROTC is a college elective. Um, all cadets take ROTC here at Norwich and that prepares them um, for active duty in the military. Um, there's also a, uh, some significant summer training that is required as a member of ROTC, but ROTC is available at college campuses throughout the country. You could take ROTC at University of Massachusetts, University of Texas, University of Vermont, whatever it might be. It's available at um, a number of institutions across the country. And again, that is a college elective or an extracurricular um, that really is, again, trying to prepare those cadets and midshipmen for active duty service as a commissioned officer in the military. Now, the core cadets at Norwich is our 24 seven leadership laboratory. That is a military lifestyle choice here at Norwich. About two thirds of, uh, of our students participate in the Corps Cadets. Um, and they learn really some hands-on leadership training, as well as uh, different management and organizational skills that they gain from their experiences as a member of our Corps Cadets. Of those members of our Corps Cadets, um, about 58 to 60%, depending on the year, actually go on to commission. You can do four years of our Corps of Cadets lifestyle and have no desire to do military service after you graduate. Again, a lot of students do that military lifestyle um, for the camaraderie, for the experience, um, for the management organizational skills that they learn um, from doing the Corps of Cadets. But again, military service um, is not required um, if you are a member of the Corps of Cadets. Um, so that really is differ differentiates us from uh, the um, uh, military academies such as West Point and uh, Annapolis where military service is required. So the first year um, as a cadet uh, is known as your Rook year or Rookdom. Um, so you need to learn to be a follower before you can become a leader. Uh, you'll start off on a level playing field the first year that you enter. Whether you did junior ROTC, junior Marines, uh, Sea Cadets, were an Eagle Scout, um, or even if you had some actual military experience as a member of the National Guard or Reserves, um, or even prior active duty experience. Um, when you enter Norwich as a member of the Corps of Cadets, your first year, you will be a Rook. Um, and so that you'll, it's a, an intense program the first year, but it's extremely rewarding. Um, you'll learn, really, that's where you learn your essential time management skills, um, teamwork, what it means to be uh, a member of a team, um, and also some personal responsibility. Um, as a member of the Corps of Cadets, and especially during your rookie year, um, time management skills are, are key because you don't have a lot of free time. Um, and the free time that you do have, you're going to spend that um, either participating in another extracurricular, such as a club or sports, um, or you're going to be doing homework. 
So really that free time that you have is valuable and um, being a member of the Corps Cadets, it almost forces you to, to really hone in on those time management skills and learn what practices work best for you when it comes to managing your time. So beyond Rookdom, um, so after you're, you are recognized as a member of the Corps of Cadets, and that typically happens sometime uh, at the end of the first semester, um, after your Rook year, um, this is kind of uh, what the training will look like uh, the next three years. So your sophomore year, you come in either as a cadet private or a cadet corporal, um, and that you're kind of given a... Um, a supervised leadership role, if you will. Um, you can help out with uh, the juniors uh, who are cadre. Uh, you could help out with the upperclassmen companies. Um, but really, that's kind of when you're given that first taste of personal responsibility and uh, and learning what it means to be that sophomore, to be that example that rooks uh, look up to. Now, your junior year, this is where um, you're really given uh, some strong leadership opportunities. Uh, you can be a cadet private all the way up to a com uh, cadet command sergeant major. You are the one that really is conducting that day-to-day -day training when it comes to uh, the rest of the Corps of Cadets, whether that you be training um, upperclassmen or you're training uh, those freshman rooks. You're the ones actually doing that training. Um, you're also the main enforcer of the disciplinary sanctions and standards. Um, as well as also uh, have a huge focus on the health and welfare of the cadets um, and rooks that will be under, um, under your leadership and under your guidance. Now your senior year, that's uh, obviously your final year. Uh, you have the opportunity to be um, a cadet private all the way up to cadet colonel, which is the highest ranking member of our core cadets. Um, you're really the administrators. You're the ones that uh, come up with the plans administer the plans and watch the juniors and sophomores kind of take it over and run with your plan. You really supervise and refine. Um, you're more the operational side, if you will, of all of the planning uh, for cadet training and planning for um, rook training. So um, you come up with a plan, implement it, administer it, and kind of sit back, supervise and refine. Now, all of these years, um, while you are uh, administering your plans or uh, helping with the day-to-day -day training or being that, that sophomore that's kind of getting that first taste of responsibility, um, there is uh, members of our Commandant staff that are there as advisors to help guide you through this process as well. Um, so you're not kind of given full reins of everything and expected to you know, uh, lead uh, 15 to 1600 cadets on your own. Um, you're given the uh, advisement and advice from our commandant staff that are there to help you. We ask that if you haven't done so already, that you take a virtual tour, um, visit norwich.edu slash admissions slash visit. Um, unfortunately at this time, because of the current pandemic, we are not having any in-person visits on campus. Um, but I highly suggest that you go online and check out the virtual tour. Um, as far as virtual tours go, it's actually pretty darn good. Um, it'll take you around campus, show you the main academic buildings, dorm rooms, um, the dining hall, library, um, all the main buildings that you would go to on campus that we would take you on your tour if we were able to. Um, this virtual tour takes you to those buildings. Um, and in those rooms. So again, I highly suggest it if you have not visited campus before, or even if you have visited campus and wanna see what the changes look like, that you uh, check out the, uh, the virtual tour. Okay, so that was a really kind of down and dirty nitty gritty of the Corps Cadets and ROTC. I'm sure that a lot of you have a, some questions. Um, so I'm going to try to answer them the best that I can. Um, I also suggest that you check out um, our website uh, under the ROTC section um, because each ROTC is specific to what they require when it comes to the application process. 
um, what they require for training, um, GPAs, all that. Um, so each ROTC is very specific in what they um, in what they require. Um, being the birthplace of ROTC, uh, we actually have all four of the ROTCs available on campus. Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps. And actually, um, with the addition of the Space Force in December of 2019, uh, the Air Force ROTC is kind of taking over um, and is administering the uh, training for uh, those of you that wish to look into and join the Space Force. So it's, it is a real thing and it is really happening. So uh, those of you that are interested in it, I highly suggest it um, because it is uh, our future. So it looks like we do have some questions already. So I'm gonna pull them up right now and try to answer them to the best of my ability. All right, so. Is an interview required to be accepted into the Corps of Cadets? No, it is not. We do not require an interview for the Corps of Cadets. Um, if you're interested in competing for an ROTC scholarship, which is a great opportunity for the federal government to pay for your college education, then yes, they do require an interview. But as for our Corps of Cadets, just fill out the application, um, indicate that you are interested in the Corps of Cadets, and it is no interview required. And the Corps of Cadets application and the regular civilian student application, um, it's the same application. We do not require a different application. All right, with the Corps of Cadets ROTC and a law enforcement degree help me get into the Coast Guard Special Law Enforcement Group or the MSRT. So I'm not familiar with those personally. I do know that um, as a senior military school, Norwich is um, uh, has a partnership with the Coast Guard and that if you go to a senior military school that has a Corps of Cadets, there is a program called the Coast Guard Direct Commission Select Schools Program. Basically, um, it takes your military school experience, applies that towards some real uh, military experience, and thus if you want to commission into the Coast Guard, it's a shorter uh, process and does not require as much training on the Coast Guard's end. Um, so I, I suggest looking into that program if that's something that you're interested in. How early do you have to show up before school in Rook year? So typically, if you're a Rook, uh, you show up about a week before academic classes start and go through Rook week. Um, that is a week that is entirely dedicated just towards Rook training and military training to get you towards um, and kind of start the process of you becoming a, a member of the Corps of Cadets. Uh, it's a very intense week, long days. Um, not a lot of sleep is, goes on during that week, but uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, and that's where you really kind of get that first introduction to the military lifestyle. So what's the acceptance rate for the Corps of Cadets? So we don't have um, exactly what the acceptance rate is for the Corps of Cadets, um, but for the school as a whole, we have a roughly a 60% acceptance rate. Does Norwich have Air Force ROTC? Yes, we do. Again, um, being the birthplace of ROTC, we have all four ROTCs available on campus, Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps. And I think I answered the second question below that as well is, can you be in the Navy ROTC and the Corps of Cadets? And yes. Now, and all of those ROTCs, are the training is conducted on campus. I wanna make note of that. Some of these big schools that you go to, they may have the option where you can do Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, whatever ROTC, but you wouldn't be physically doing that training on campus. You'd have to go to another school um, that's sponsoring that training. At Norwich, again, being the birthplace, we have all four ROTCs with the training being conducted on campus. Are cadets and civilians in classes together? Yes, so our school is fully integrated in almost every aspect. Um, about two thirds of our students are members of the Corps of Cadets and about one third are civilian resident students going to school here taking the same classes, you'll be in the same classrooms, on the same sports teams, using the same facilities, same dining hall. The only place that it really differ, uh, 
differs is um, where you go to bed at night. Um, so our members of our Corps of Cadets sleep in our barrack style uh, dormitories that are up um, in a specific area of campus known as our upper parade ground. Whereas if you're a civilian student, um, you uh, go to more traditional civilian style dorm rooms um, and live in a different area of campus. Um, but it, the campus itself is pretty small, um, so it's really not that far away. So what is the Space Force and do we have to wear the uniform every day or select days? Um, so if you're interested in the Space Force, I highly suggest checking out spaceforce.com. I think if you Google that, it'll come right up. Um, but basically, it's a new branch of the military. I'm not sure if you've been following the news at all, but it's a new branch of the military that was started in December of 2019. Um, it's under the Department of the Air Force, kind of like how the Marine Corps is under the Department of the Navy. Um, so if you're interested in that, I suggest checking that out um, and reading up on the information about uh, the Space Force. Because it's so new, I personally don't know a whole lot about it, and I probably know only about as much as the, uh, what the news is saying. Um, so again, I highly suggest you check that out if that's something that you're interested. So do you wear the uniform every day? So yes, as a member of the Corps of Cadets, you wear the uniform every single day. Um, and that's kind of another big difference between uh, the Corps of Cadets here at Norwich and if you were to just do ROTC at a civilian school. If you were to go to ROTC at, say, UMass Amherst or something, you may only wear the uniform once a week, um, and you may only conduct physical training in the morning, possibly only once a week. At Norwich, you'll be conducting physical training um, at least two times a week in the morning, um, and you will wear the uniform every single day two classes. During your rook year, you'll wear the uniform every single day, not only two classes, but at night and on weekends. Um, but as you progress throughout your uh, throughout the class years, uh, you'll be given more privileges on when you uh, don't have to wear the uniform, but all cadets wear the uniform to class every single day. Do you keep your uniforms? Yes, you pay for them, so you keep your uniforms. Do you know how many years of training uh, do you have to take to be enrolled in the Air Force? So our ROTC program is typically a four-year uh, program. Um, that's usually how long it takes for somebody to complete their degree, as well as also complete their requirements in their respective ROTC uh, to gain that commission. Um, there are some extenuating circumstances where it may take someone longer, but 95% uh, of the time, it's typically just four years to complete that bachelor's degree and complete the ROTC requirements. Uh, if you take medication for ADHD, will that affect your application process? Um, if you have some questions about that, I am not a medical professional, um, but if you have some questions about that, I would highly suggest um, looking into uh, what the medical requirements say for ROTC. I know that they change from year to year. Um, when I was going through, I knew that typically you could not take those medications um, and be enrolled in ROTC. As far as a member of the Corps of Cadets, last I knew you could still take those medications um, as long as you do not plan on enrolling or um, plan on uh, volunteering for military service. But again, I know things change pretty often, so I would check into those ROTC websites um, as well as also those military websites uh, for more specifics on that. Um, but I know that is a very um, sensitive subject right now in the military, so I wouldn't want to say anything um, unless I knew for a fact. Are you able to visit campus without a tour or no because of COVID? Um, we do have, I'll say this, we are, um, an open campus with open borders, but it's a private institution. As of right now, we are not allowing visitors on campus. Okay, are you able to, vi oh, no, no, just said that, sorry. For, for clarity, you can get an ROTC scholarship awarded, does, ORP slash cadets have the opportunity for a similar type of scholarship. I'm not sure what ORP slash cadets. 
Um, I, I want to say you say core uh, cadets. Um, so the core cadets does not have any specific scholarships like the ROTC scholarship. We do give out a lot of merit-based and grant-based financial aid. About 95% of our students receive financial aid. But as far as that ROTC scholarship, where um, essentially the federal government pays for your tuition, and then Norwich covers your room and board, um, as far as a scholarship like that, we do not offer that. But again, we do offer very competitive, comprehensive financial aid packages um, as a whole. How competitive will my application be if I am an Army JRTC Battalion Commander? Very competitive. Um, we look for uh, extracurricular activities when we read through your applications. We love seeing that you're involved in junior ROTC. We love seeing that if you're involved in sports teams, we love seeing you involved in uh, other clubs and activities, volunteer service. Um, if you have a part-time job, we love seeing um, and uh, accepting well-rounded students at Norwich. What's a competitive GPA and slash ACT slash test scores for Norwich? So as it stands currently, Norwich is a test optional school. We do not require the SATs or the ACTs for your acceptance. Um, and a competitive GPA, we typically have around a 2.8 to 3.0 GPA for our acceptance students. That changes year to year, but that's typically the average GPA for our acceptance students. Now, that does not mean that if you don't have that GPA that you wouldn't get accepted. Again, we, we look at the total students, see, you know, maybe they didn't do so well academically, but they were super involved with other, you know, club sports and activities. Uh, again, we, we look at the whole student. Um, or maybe they had some significant family event that happened and they didn't do as well as they need, would left, like to. Um, all that usually uh, comes out in the application. Um, and so we, we take that into account when reviewing your application. Do students ever switch from core cadets uh, to says non-civilian? I assume you mean for switch from core cadets civilian or vice versa. Um, so if you start off in the core cadets um, and decide that it's not for you, um, there are ways to switch to the, the civilian side. However, um, the open spaces uh, for switching from core cadets to, to civilian are very limited. Um, and typically, we ask that students try to stick it out, make it through Rookdom, make it through day by day. And by the end of the year, if they decide, you know what, I'm glad I went through this process, but the, you know, the core cadets isn't for me, but I want to continue my education at Norwich, then you absolutely can switch from the core cadets to civilian side. And then we do have actually students that come in and, and switch vice versa. They, they start off as a civilian and they say, you know what, I'm, you know, I really want to challenge myself some more. I want to do the core cadets. And so they enter the core cadets, their academic sophomore year, but core cadets freshman year and go on and become successful cadets. If you receive an ROTC scholarship, do you participate in the Corps of Cadets? So if you want to participate in ROTC training, if you are uh, an ROTC scholarship uh, recipient, you have to be a member of our Corps of Cadets. Simple as that. Are there any specific majors uh, the Air, Air Force ROTC requires? Um, so. Technically, no. However, the Air Force as a whole is a very technologically oriented branch of the military. Um, so if it will make you more competitive um, if you are looking to get that ROTC scholarship from the Air Force um, and you want to go in as a, uh, an electrical and computer engineering major or something like that. You, um, again, no, that, that's just not saying that there aren't English majors and our political science majors that do Air Force ROTC. But again, that's uh, being the very tech heavy branch of the military that they are. That's kind of the students that they look for. Is there club hockey? Yes, there is. Uh, there's both club men's and club women's hockey, and they are both very competitive um, in some of the more popular clubs on campus. Uh, I went to a number of the men's club hockey games when I was a student. It was always a fun time because uh, we actually played the West Point club hockey team, and that was always a very uh, exciting game. Uh, lots of lots of good times were had in the stands for that one. That was, that was a lot of fun. 
How much choice do you have in terms of MOS and deployment after commissioning if you make the choice to be active duty? So that really depends. Uh, that is a very loaded question, and that very much depends on the political climate, our military climate, um, the time you enter, when you plan on commissioning, all that stuff. So I'm not even going to try to give you an answer on that because what I give you as an answer right now could change completely in the four years, you know, until you commission. Um, so um, there's always a, a when you serve in the military, there's always a chance of a deployment. When you serve in the military, you're you're serving the federal government. Um, so ultimately, they're the ones to decide what your MOS would be. Um, I know when I commissioned, I put down my top three, and I happened to get one of my top three uh, for my choice of my MOS. So it really depends on political climate, military climate, Department of Defense climate, everything that's going on kind of in the country. What are the outcomes of graduating ROTC after college? Um, so I think what you mean is what are the, I guess the result of that or what, what happens. Um, so if you do ROTC, get that um, and complete all of the requirements to gain that commission. Uh, depending on your ROTC, you'll commission as either a second lieutenant or an ensign. Um, and then in, you'll go on to uh, uh, compete and uh, complete your military requirements and uh, kind of see what happens after that. Again, it's a it's a full-time job, so you're really at the liberty of, of your bosses and uh, what the military political climate is. Again, as I was talking about earlier, so there's a lot of things that could happen. There's possible deployments, um, or you could possibly stay stateside your entire military career. Um, so there's lots of options. It depends on what your MOS is, what your specialties are, what additional training you go on to do. So, so really depends on all those factors. Is Marine Corps ROTC all four years or is it one year Navy and then three years Marines? So the Marine Corps ROTC is, and the Marines as a whole fall under the Department of the Navy. And so you would um, do your ROTC training under the Department of the Navy. But that being said, you would be that Marine Corps option. And so you would do more focused Marine Corps training versus those that are actually going the Navy option would do more focused Navy training. So it's all four years. If you have an ROTC scholarship, do you have to go to basic training after graduating from Norwich? Um, no, so you don't have to go to basic training, but there is additional summer training as well as training after you graduate um, for uh, ROTC, ROTC scholarship recipients. Um, so each summer uh, you'll have uh, summer training, depending on what your ROTC is, depends on what the summer training will look like, um, but you will have summer training every summer in between uh, your school years, uh, as well as also continuing training after you graduate. Um, because training never stops. When you're when you're in the military, you're constantly training. Uh, there really is no end to the training. You're it it, it is forever tra training, if you will. But to but do you have to do specifically basic training? No. About how much does the uniform cost? Um, so. Uh, I want to say that the uniform is about $2,000 in total for all the uniforms that you receive. Um, and that is split up between uh, your freshman year. Uh, can you not be in the Corps of Cadets and do ROTC like live, uh, like live like a civilian and do ROTC? Uh, no. Uh, so if you are going to uh, compete and participate in ROTC training at Norwich, you need to be a member of our Corps of Cadets. If you are an Air Force ROTC, do you wear Air Force specific uniforms? So all members of our Corps of Cadets wear the digital camo. Um, however, when there is one day a week, uh, it's typically on Tuesday, uh, and that day, the all members of their specific ROTC will wear that ROTC specific uniform. So instead of everyone wearing the digitals, on Tuesday you'll see people wearing the Marine Corps, I think it's MARPATs now, uh, Army's wearing OCPs, 
Air Force is wearing OCPs now. I know they were wearing the tiger stripes. Navy was wearing the blue digitals. Now they're wearing kind of a darker green digitals. So that day, yes, you would wear your specific ROTC's uh, uniform. But all other days throughout the week, you would wear the Corps Cadets uniform, whether that be the digitals or our, one of our more dress uniforms. If you do not receive an ROTC scholarship your first year, can you apply for future years to ROTC scholarships while at Norwich? Yes, and a number of our students actually do uh, uh, receive scholarships that way. So ROTC scholarships, you, um, there are two ways to apply for them. You can apply for them before you go to a school, and that is applying for a national-based ROTC scholarship. Um, you're competing with students from all over the country for those scholarships. If you are lucky to get awarded a four-year or a three-year national-based ROTC scholarship, you can take that scholarship to any school. We hope that you come here to take it and come to Norwich and bring that scholarship because if you have a national-based ROTC scholarship or a Norwich-based ROTC scholarship, we will then in turn pay for your room and board. It, the ROTC scholarship, if you take it to other schools, will only cover your tuition. But say you apply for that national ROTC scholarship and you don't get it, that's okay. You can come to Norwich and because Norwich is a senior military school, we get a specific allotment of ROTC scholarships that we can then award to our students after they arrive on campus. So instead of competing with students from all across the country for a scholarship, you're only competing with the students here at Norwich for those scholarships. And again, they have three and four years available. When does the application open for fall of 2021? Um, so usually that's uh, it's open sometime in late August, early September, um, after we have in-processed all of our students for that current year. Um, that's when we start our uh, uh, reviewing applications for the fo uh, following fall. Okay, is there band in Norwich? And if so, does it affect ROTC participation? Um, so yes, Norwich University actually has the oldest collegiate band in the nation. Uh, it started in 1820. Uh, there's a saying going around, and I think it's called uh, Notre Dame's band likes to say that they're the uh, oldest band in the land. Well, they may be the oldest continuous, uh, but we are the oldest band. Uh, the only reason is we've stopped is because of our students actually going off and fighting in wars. Um, so uh, yes, we do have our um, band. And it is actually one of our more popular extracurriculars uh, available to our members of our Corps of Cadets. Um, and does it affect ROTC training? Typically, no. Um, there usually aren't too many conflicts when it comes to doing band and ROTC. And if they are, usually it's a case-by-case -case basis and they'll be able um, to work it out with the schedule. How do we get an application if we live in another state? So uh, applications are done either through the Common App or we prefer that you do it just on our Norwich University website. Uh, so if you check it out there, you can apply directly online through there. Uh, where can the ROTC applications in general be found online? Uh, so if you're looking for applying for an ROTC scholarship, um, that you would just type into Google um, whatever our ROTC, you know, Army, Navy, Air Force, whatever it might be. Uh, type that into Google. Typically, it's the first thing that pops up in the Google. Now, applying for an ROTC scholarship and applying for the Corps of Cadets are different. They're two separate scholarships, but you're going to want to do those scholarships at, or excuse me, two different applications, but you're going to want to do those applications at the same time. All right. Are there any specific Army ROTC scholarships for, uh, available for a nursing major? Last I knew that nursing majors were in high, high demand for uh, Army ROTC. So when you apply for an ROTC scholarship uh, through the Army, you'd indicate what your intended major would be, and that's part of your application process. Is partici participation in sports required of cadets? Uh, no, it is not. Um, a number of our members of our Corps cadets do participate in sports on a number of levels, whether that be on the varsity level, junior varsity level, club level, intramural level, um, being the manager of a team, uh, whatever it might be. Again, a number of our members of our Corps cadets do do that. 
um, but it is not required. I myself was actually the manager of my, the men's basketball team all four years. Uh, what are all the available sports uh, at Norwich? Um, so those are all available on our website, the Norwich University Athletics website. Um, I suggest checking that out. Um, but a number of our popular sports are football, uh, men's and women's ice hockey, which have won multiple national championships, uh, men's and women's rugby, uh, lacrosse, basketball for men's and women, cross country men's and women, um, so we have, a, for a NCAA Division III school, we have a number of sports teams. Um, there aren't too many uh, NCAA Division III schools out there that have both varsity level football and varsity level um, ice hockey, because um, those are actually typically the most expensive sports for a school to sponsor, um, and we have both of them. Does Norwich offer specialty schools during summer training for upperclassmen with good merit? So specialty schools, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, if you mean specialty military schools, such as Airborne and Air Assault, um, yes, those are available to our, our cadets that are participating in ROTC training. Um, and so that would be arranged through your respective ROTC. Um, and that's kind of done on a, an order of merit list um, and given to those cadets that are in good academic standing and good disciplinary standing um, within their respective ROTC. Uh, does Norwich have Greek life? Uh, we have academic Greek life, but as far as fraternities and sororities go and having a, a, uh, a sorority or fraternity house, uh, we do not have those on campus. How much time is there typically between graduation and Bullock? Uh, so that can take uh anywhere between you going to Bullock within the, a month of graduation or that can be you going to Bullock a year and a half after graduation um i really depends on when they're able to get a slot for you um and so it, again it really is kind of year to year depending on what your mos is your branch i mean Bullock is army but what your mos is um so yeah, it really depends on year to year, but it can be anywhere from, you know, you're, only, you're going to Bullock within a couple of weeks of graduating to being a year and a half. Is there training for ROTC during summer between the senior year of high school and freshman year of Norwich? No, there is not. Um, there is no ROTC specific training for people uh, in between their senior year of high school and freshman year of Norwich. Uh, the training starts when um, just a week before classes uh, during Brook Week. What are your options if you just graduate from Corps Cadets uh, military options? Um, so if you are uh, a member of our Corps Cadets and don't do any, uh, aren't on the commissioning track uh, while you're a cadet here and don't, don't com uh, commission uh, upon graduation, um, there's a number of different options for you military-wise. Uh, you could enlist in your respective branch of the military. You could and uh, go into the uh, National Guard, reserves, or active duty of that respective branch. Uh, you could enlist and try to go to OCS. That's what I did. Is um, I did not have an ROTC scholarship, or, um, and so when I graduated, I actually enlisted into the Army National Guard here in Vermont and went through officer candidate school and commissioned that way. Um, also, you could look at um, some other select programs within the military, such as the uh, uh, Coast Guard, since there's no Coast Guard ROTC, that uh, Coast Guard Select Schools program. Um, so there's a couple of different options if you're looking at doing military service after you graduate um, and you didn't have an ROTC, uh, didn't uh, commission through ROTC through Norwich. Um, what's great about Norwich is, again, it being a military school, when you're applying for those uh, different military options, it, it really looks great and gives you kind of a leg up to the other applicants. Uh, will I be able to attend med school after graduation or will I have to go active duty right after? Um, so that's really kind of depends on what your life goals are. If you want to go to med school, then active duty, uh, 
doesn't look like it might be the best option for you, but then there's other options where you could go um, and actually have uh, the military pay for your med school after, or excuse me, pay, have the military pay for your med school while you're in med school um, and do that after you graduate. Um, there's tons of different options with that. You could also come to Norwich, uh, do the Corps of Cadets and not do, um, not look to commission directly after you graduate, do the pre-med program, but then try to commission through the med program. Again, there's tons of options with that if you're looking at doing the med school route. Okay, so, so far that's all the questions that have been written. I'm gonna give some time for everyone else to uh, write some questions. If um, Again, this was specific to ROTC and the Corps of Cadets, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that aren't about ROTC and the Corps of Cadets, because I'm sure the question that you have is is the question that someone else has, so I'd be, I'd be happy to answer them. Oh, well, someone said thank you for your time. Well, well thank you very much, I appreciate that. So I'm just going to leave it open for a little bit of time. So again, anyone else that has any questions, I hope that I was able to cover them all. What is day-to-day? -day, oh, yes, there are. Here they come in. All right. Uh, what is day-to-day -day life as a rook? Um, so day-to-day -day starts off usually at 530 in the morning. Um, you then uh, go off to uh, early morning physical training. Um, within the, either the core cadets or your specific ROTCs, because sometimes their specific ROTCs have um, their own uh, physical fitness training. After that, you'll go um, back to your dorm rooms, get cleaned up, get in what is known as the uniform of the day. Um, and then you have morning formation. Morning formation is at 745. It's when the entire core cadets will form up outside their dorm rooms. Um, the flag, uh, the flag uh, that we have on campus, our, our campus flagpole, will raise the uh, stars and stripes, everyone will salute the flag, and then after that, there'll be some information that's passed down um, about what's happening that day, and then after that, to, uh, you go to classes. Classes typically run from 8 a.m. to 1600 hours or 4 p.m., um, and so during that time, everybody's going off to their different classes, in between classes, trying to get breakfast, lunch, all that. Um, so you're kind of not on your own, but that's when you're taking care of uh, what you need to do throughout the uh, what's known as the duty day. Um, after 1600, uh, every, all rooks typically either will go to their respective sports teams practices, or if they aren't uh, part of a sports team, they'll go um, back to their rooms. They'll um, conduct some what's known as sergeant's training time. Um, that's where your cadre will then uh, kind of teach you a, a new lesson for the day. In the beginning, that might be something as simple as how to shine your belt or shine your shoes or make your bed. Um, but by the end of Rookdom, that might be them uh, kind of giving you a mission and having you plan a mission, if you will. Um, then after that, you will march as a platoon to our chow hall for dinner. Um, you'll then come back to your dorm rooms after dinner. And then from then until about either 2100 or nine o'clock um, is study hall time. That's when you're reading your books, doing your homework, taking care of things that you need to do in your dorm room. And then at about nine o'clock, um, that's when everybody is uh, put to bed and it's lights out. Uh, do we have to live in the dorms? Yes, as a member of the Corps of Cadets, you have to live in the barracks. Uh, when will overnight stays be available for juniors and seniors? That is a very good question. Um, as of right now, we don't have a timeline yet of when we'll be able to have juniors and seniors um, and visitors on campus, either for day visits or overnights. Um, again, uh, just trying to play it safe with the pandemic that's going on. Um, but as uh, hopefully as we develop a vaccine and that's implemented, we'll be able to have people on campus for visits again. Um, I know we look forward to having everybody being able to come on campus. I really enjoy giving tours and talking to families a lot. So I'm looking forward to that day. Um, but unfortunately, we do, do not have a timeline for that. 
Uh, Rebecca, thank you for appreciating the time. Appreciate it. Uh, can we get your email? Yes, absolutely. All right. So, um, so I am the admissions counselor for Vermont and parts of Massachusetts. Um, so each region of the country has uh, specific admissions counselors. So I'm going to give you all my email. I'm going to write that out. Hold on one second. Let me see. All right, so I'm just writing out my email in the chat screen for everybody. Okay, all right, so I sent that out. So my email is jkelly2 at norwich.edu. Um, I'm also going to um, write out the Norwich website, and from there, you can find out who your specific counselor is. But again, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, but uh, each uh, region of the country, again, has a specific counselor when it comes to uh, reviewing their application um, and guiding them through the actual application process. Okay, and there's the Norwich website, which uh, you can uh, kind of scroll around, look around, explore. Um, that also has links to the athletics website. Um, so again, I highly suggest checking that out, checking out the virtual tour. Okay, all right, so more questions are rolling in. All right. Uh, how are regular school days? Um, again, I hope I covered that already uh, where I talked about the schedule of what it looks like. Um, but again, the academic day is typically from 8 a.m. Excuse me, 8 a.m. Uh, to 1600 or 4 p.m. Um, and I say 1600 because again, that's military time and actually the school as a whole runs on military time. Um, so yeah, it just makes it easier so that there's no confusion. Does experience within the Corps of Cadets make you more competitive for an OCS application following graduation from North? Uh, yes, it does. Uh, it helped me with my application process for OCS. Um, it definitely gave me a leg up from other people that were applying for OCS um, that did not have any uh, military experience prior to that. I heard about something called cavalry where you ride horses. Is there anything else you can tell me about that? Uh, yes, uh, so cavalry is one of our specialty units. Um, we have three specialty units within the Corps of Cadets. That's cavalry, uh, band company that I already talked about a little bit, our regimental band, um, as well as drill company. Um, and each of those specialty units uh, uh, gives you some more individualized training, um, more so than you would get just by doing the Corps of Cadets. Um, but cavalry, is exactly what it sounds like. You get the opportunity to ride horses and participate in equestrian style training. Um, if that's something that interests you, um, you can be uh, look up some more information on that uh, on our website, but as well as um, if that's something that interests you, you would indicate that before uh, on your application. Um, and so you would enter uh, your rook year, or potentially if you wanted to, uh, you could enter in your sophomore or junior year um, that you want to participate in that CAV training. And so, uh, uh, yeah, it's a great opportunity to get some kind of more individualized uh, military training. And then let's see, as a cadet, are you allowed to bring anything into your dorms? Um, so as a rook, your freshman year, um, you're pretty limited on what you can bring into your dorm room as far, um, you're pretty limited in what you can bring into your dorm room as far as, uh, like microwaves, fridges, all that stuff. Nope, can't have that. Um, I, I actually wasn't allowed a fridge in my room until my, uh, technically, I think it was my junior year. Um, and so each class year, you're given more privileges on what you can and cannot have in your dorm room. But um, you'll, if, uh, you apply, are accepted, 
um, and indicate that you want to go through the uh, the Rook training program, the packing list will be made available to you. Um, I, you can also uh, check that out on the Norwich University website as well to kind of see what that freshman Rook year uh, packing list looked like. Okay, so it looks like that's the last question so far. Again, I'm going to leave it open open for a little bit longer if anyone else has any more questions oh, oh, okay let's see one more is it mandatory to know or learn military time um so i i guess i would say yes um you don't need to know it before you come to norwich but the school as a whole runs on military time um and it's a good skill to learn because pretty much the rest of the world uses military time except the united states um, so it's uh, a good skill to learn. I actually uh, run my computer as well as all my phones and everything on military time. All right, so I'm going to leave this open for about five minutes longer and uh, I guess you all are very welcome. Um, thank you so much for being such a great audience. I'm gonna leave this open for about five minutes longer. Um, so if anyone else has any more questions, please feel free to type them in. But if you are all set, um, you are more than welcome to exit out of this. And I hope I was able to answer all of your questions. So again, it was really great talking to you all. I know it was kind of a, a, a one-sided conversation, if you will, but I, I appreciate all your questions that you had. Um, I know this can, um, Colleges right now are uh, uh, kind of in unprecedented area. Um, we're, we're all trying to figure out exactly what's the best way and the safest way to open and how to do um, and how to uh, to do all this. And so, um, nor I can tell you that Norwich has been is putting in a lot of uh, safety measures in place for our students that are coming in the fall. Um, I know I'm very excited to see the students that we're having coming in the fall. It's, campus really comes alive when they're, when they're on campus. Um, but uh, yeah, no, uh, uh, thank you all for attending. I really appreciate it. And it looks like there's some more questions. So uh, let me check this out. Let's see. Lots of thanks. I appreciate the thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Let's see, do you have summer training with schools from other countries? Uh, so there's some opportunities, yes, for summer training for schools from other countries as well. We do have some partnership programs with other military schools. Um, and then there's also different partnership programs through um, ROTC that allow you to do some training with either some foreign militaries or some foreign military schools. Is there a study abroad program? Yes, absolutely. Um, there is a study abroad program. Um, currently, uh, given uh, the pandemic, uh, we are not having uh, any students study abroad in the fall. Um, our borders are currently shut down by order of our federal government. There's no travel to um, places in Europe where typically students go to. But normally, yes, uh, there is study abroad. Um, and Students absolutely can do ROTC, the Corps of Cadets, and study abroad. Uh, popular locations are uh, in Europe. Um, there's also some really great opportunities to do some, I guess technically wouldn't be study abroad, but study abroad opportunities in um, New York City or the Washington DC area as well. Okay, looks like that's the last question so far. So I'm gonna stay on the line for about a minute or two more. Let's see, are there any opportunities to study abroad in Japan? Um, off the top of my head, I have not heard of any Norwich students going and studying abroad in Japan. However, that does not mean it's not available. Um, our study abroad program um, 
uh, they're really great. They're really helpful. They're really knowledgeable. They want to get students to study abroad and experience those different cultures. So if there's a place or a region of the world um, that you're interested in going to, um, I know that they're going to work with students and work with you to try to uh, come up with a plan on how to make that a reality. I just know that popular places are Europe, um, just because majority of European countries also speak English um, as well as their, their home language. Um, but again, that's not to say that Japan is not an opportunity uh, that you'd be able to do. I know I had a um, classmate of mine that went and studied abroad actually in Australia, uh, and he really enjoyed it. All right, so I'm gonna stay on about a minute or two more, just to let you get those questions in. Okay, well, thank you all so much. Again, it was really great talking to you all. Um, hope you have a great day. Um, please stay safe out there. A lot of craziness going on in the world, and I hope that all of you are staying safe. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to welcome you all on campus sometime uh, in the future. Uh, again, if you're, I highly suggest taking that virtual tour, and hopefully, again, we'll be able to see each other on campus because it really is a beautiful campus, um, and Norwich is a very special place. So thank you all for attending this webinar. And again, you all have yourself a great, safe, and happy day. Thanks. Bye.